Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be coloring in the Scandinavian Folk Patterns coloring book. I did a walkthrough of this book a couple days ago, so if you're interested in the patterns in this book, definitely go check it out. There'll be a link in the description as well as a link at the end of this video. So because I'm not Swedish, I actually did have to do some research before I started coloring this page. Um, though I've seen them before and they're usually always red, I just wanted to make sure that I was getting the colors correct. So I found out that these are called Dala horses, or Dalahost in Swedish. They are originally made for children back in like the 17th century, but I think I read something that said it could be even earlier, like Nordic. Even though these horses are traditionally painted red, they can be painted different colors, many bright colors. And I tried to find out whether or not these colors meant anything, like if red meant love and yellow meant friendship, but I couldn't find any information that supported that, so I guess I just assumed that they're not related. I did also read that the colors of the horses and the designs were inspired by the flowers of their region and that from village to village the decorations on the horses could be different depending on who painted it and from what village you were getting it from. So you could technically get a horse from one village and everybody would know it was from that village. So because I like my stuff to look authentic, I went with a red dollar horse just because it's the most common dollar horse that you will find. While coloring in this book, I did notice that it was a little bit harder to blend my colors together, um, especially if they're not from the same brand. Most of the time I use um, my Polychromos colors, but I do have some Prismacolors that I use just because I don't have, you know, some colors in the Polychromos, but I have them in Prismacolor. Um, so this paper, although it's nice, um, I was having a hard time blending, and you definitely can see it when I'm using my blender tool. Um, later I go back and I try and make it darker, but it doesn't actually work very well. Um, so I think from now on I'll try and just stick to one particular brand during, unless I, I can't find that color I want. I did look this um, Dala horse up on Google Images and I used a couple of different horses for reference, um, but I did try and definitely make it my own. I noticed that a lot of the horses obviously didn't have a lot of shading, it was pretty much just your basic color, um, so that was a bit of a challenge for me because I usually like to blend my stuff together, make it look a little bit more 3D, a little bit more like, um, give it more definition, so I kind of laid back a little bit on the shading, um, which is really bothering me, but I just gotta let it go. You'll notice as I go through that I put a little piece of paper underneath my hand sometimes. I probably should have done this the entire time, but I didn't really think about it. Um, and the reason I do this is because um, for some reason the paper wasn't collecting all of the pigment, so my hand was collecting the rest of the pigment that was kind of um, fallout from what wasn't being accepted by the paper. So eventually I noticed I started to get like a pink um, kind of background and it was not on purpose and that was because the pigments were getting smooshed around the page um, so I just kind of put a piece of paper under my hand to kind of prevent that from happening and you won't see it in the video but I did edit out when I erased like all of the pink that was on the background because it was it was pretty bad 
the fallout was actually something really new for me. I've never really had that problem before, so you've probably never seen in any of my videos me having to use a piece of paper under my hand. Um, so yeah, that wasn't something I was ready for, which is why that happened in the first place. These flowers kind of remind me of those firepower flowers from Mario Brothers. <laughs> Comment down below if you think so too. So here I'm using um, a color pencil that I got from this um, art supply store called Diglick. Um, and these are relatively cheap color pencils and I gotta say I'm not too much of a fan of them. They don't blend together with other color pencils very well. Um, and they kind of don't really blend together with each other either, um, so I don't think I'll be purchasing them again, although it makes me sad because they have pastel colors and I love pastel colors and Polychromos definitely doesn't have any pastel colors um, and I just haven't seen any Prismacolor pastels in my art supply stores anywhere near me. I think the biggest problem I'm going to have with this book, which is really disappointing, is the paper. Like, when I put the color down, it just, you know, it spreads across the paper just fine, but when I add a second layer on top of it, like a darker color, um, you can't really see it, and I don't understand that. So I think I'm going to try to do where I don't color in my shading with the base color. Um, I just kind of like leave a little gap and then go in with the dark color after that and see how that goes. Um, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a very complicated and challenging um, coloring book if I can't figure this shading thing out. I am interested though to see how this paper reacts to watercolor, because I use watercolor right now to fill in my backgrounds, just to save a little bit on color pencils since they're so expensive. Um, but I'm not too sure, I'm going to have to try that out and I'll report back and let you guys know. to get some better lighting. Right now I'm using an up light and a bedside lamp without a nightshade on it, so <laughs> the lighting in this is not that great. So hopefully when I get better lighting the video quality will actually increase, which will be great because then maybe you could see the details a little bit better, which is why I take pictures at the end so that maybe the camera captures a little bit more of the depth of the picture than the video does. Well, there's not much left to be said about this, so I'll just go ahead and let the music take over.
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. If you have some time, take a second and hop on over to my Scandinavian Folk Art Patterns coloring book walkthrough and you can see more patterns from this coloring book. As always, happy coloring!